It's really funny that I wanted to film my Christmas book haul video today, but I didn't want to do it without brushing my teeth first. Who's going to care? Who's going to know that I haven't brushed my teeth yet? Hi Booktube, it's Kim at K Becker's Books and this is going to be my obscene Christmas book haul. So if you're a reader or you love books, what do you ask for for Christmas? Clearly you ask for more books. And we are, um, I'm grateful and we have the advantage of being able to purchase books um, as cheaply as possible, typically is what I do. But my husband asked me, what do you want for Christmas? And I said, books. And all I had to do was do make a shopping list on Book Outlet, which is where I really enjoy buying a lot of my books. And I said, here you go, hit send, press enter. And there were my Christmas gifts, which make me super happy. So I'm just gonna quickly show you what I received for Christmas. There's a lot, so I'm not gonna spend too much time on each book, but I, there are some of the books that I, I do wanna spend a little bit of extra time on. Uh, my my daughter, my 12-year-old daughter also, uh, she said re-gifted me some books, but she does that thinking and knowing that I will like them and enjoy them, and I always appreciate when she does that. So the first one she gave me is a really cute one, The Little Book of Cheer, and <laughs> it's things to make me smile and things to make me cheerful and happy, and it's just something that's really cute. It's got really cute little pictures and things just little things to read to make you happy. So it's something that I would look at probably every day. The second one is a book by Sharon Creech. It's The Wanderer. And Sharon Creech wrote a lot of different books that I think a lot of us read as children or as middle schoolers. She wrote Hate That Cat and Love That Dog. She seems to be a cat hater and a dog lover. Um, she wrote Walk Two Moons. And she was the first... American author to win a British Children's Book Prize, which is called, I have notes on the back of the book, the Carnegie Medal for British Children's Books. She also is a Newbery Medal Award winner. So my daughter gave me this. She also gave me The Thing About Jellyfish by Allie Benjamin. I actually saw that she got this in a library hall and I wanted to take it. I'm going to quickly read a little bit about it. Um, Susie Swanson has always known things that others don't. She can explain the sleep partners of ants. She knows there are 150 million jellyfish stings on the planet every year. She knows that the average middle school kid contains about 20 billion of Shakespeare, Shakespeare's atoms, but she can't understand how Franny Jackson's lifetime could be cut so short before Susie could make up for the worst thing she'd ever done to her friend. How heartbreaking does that sound? But look at how adorable this cover is. And I wanted to grab it when my daughter hauled it from a library book sale. She also gave me a nonfiction book, um, Simon Winchester's Krakatoa. And he is the author of The Professor and the Madman. And this is the legendary annihilation in 1883 of the volcano island of Krakatoa, which was followed by an immense tsunami that killed nearly 40,000 people. So that sounds really interesting, and I, I love to learn about different historical events, so she regifted me that one. Now, the books that came from my um, book outlet haul from my husband for Christmas are, ne are next, and he gave me two nonfiction books. The first one is Far From the Tree, <coughs> excuse me, by Andrew Solomon. And this is the young adult version of his adult book, which is Far From the Tree, um, Parents, Children, and the Search for Identity, which was published in 2012. Andrew Solomon also wrote The Noonday Demon, an Atlas of Depression, which won the 2001 National Book Award and was a finalist for the 2002 um, Pulitzer. Um, he's also an LGBTQ and mental health advocate and uh, something that I, my family has many members that live with mental illness of one kind or another and so this is a topic that I really enjoy learning more about. Um, it's the young adult version so it's hopefully going to be a little bit more accessible and, but it still sounded really interesting to me so I'm going to start with this one. The other nonfiction title is Svetlana Alexievich's The Unwomanly Face of War. 
And she wrote this in 1985. Um, but it was, yeah, 1985 in Russian. It was published in 2017 in the U.S. in English. She's a Belarusian investigative journalist and an oral historian. Um, she won the 2015 Nobel Prize um, for her work. And she writes an oral history, which I kind of, you know, I knew what that was, but I looked it up a little bit. And oral history is a collection and study of historical info using recordings and personal interviews with people who were there um, and had personal information or interaction with the historical event. And this book is The Unwomanly Face of War, An Oral History of Women in World War II. And she also wrote um, Voices from Chernobyl, which is another book that um, actually Heidi, Heidi on My Reading Life really highly recommended that book. And it's another one that I'd love to pick up. Uh, the next one is um, Fantasy, and this is written by Aditi Korana called The Library of Fates. And I love reading fantasy here and there. A little, really quickly. No one is entirely certain what brings the Emperor Sikander to Shalingar. Until now, the idyllic kingdom has been immune to his many violent conquests. To keep the visit friendly, Princess Emrita has offered herself as his bride, sacrificing everything. Family, her childhood love, and her freedom to save her people. But her offer isn't enough. So, hmm. It also was a little bit of a cover by, I uh, thought it was really pretty. This one is Not Wanted on the Voyage by Timothy Finley. Talk about a cover by, look at the, look at that face and those eyes. And it's without knowing too much about the story. I'm wondering if the face, this face has anything to do with the, the actual narrative in the book, but um, Not Wanted on the Voyage is the story of the great flood and the first time the world ended. In a brilliant, forgettable drama filled with the extraordinary cast of remarkable characters, the tyrannical Noah and his indomitable wife, Mrs. Noise, the aging and irritable Yahweh, a chorus of singing sheep, and a unicorn destined for a horrible death. With pathos and pageantry, desperation and hope, magic and mythology, this acclaimed novel weaves an unforgettable spell. Yes, please, let me read that one. <laughs> Next one is another fantasy from Catherine Addison called The Goblin Emperor. And sorry, but I'm gonna read a little bit of the blurb. Born of a marriage made only as part of a treaty, the youngest son of the emperor has lived his entire life in exile, far from his father and the imperial court. He knows little of the rituals of the empire. He knows less about the deadly intrigue that surrounds the government and the court. But when his father and three half brothers die, suddenly Maya is summoned to take his rightful place on the throne. Um, every now and then I slip in a fantasy because they're really fun to read and in between other deeper, maybe more, not always depressing, but maybe more serious books and serious topics. Um, I love reading fantasy. It's just kind of a getaway and a fantasy story. The next one is Marina Luwika, Luwika, A Short History of Tractors in Ukrainian. Um, two years after my mother died, my father fell in love with a glamorous blonde Ukrainian divorcee. He was 84 and she was 36. She exploded into our lives like a fluffy pink grenade. And this it was nominated for the Man Booker Prize. Looks really interesting, so pick this up. Next one is Heart Spring Mountain, a novel by Robin MacArthur. And it is an August 2011 and tropical storm Irene has just wreaked havoc on Vermont, flooding rivers and destroying homes. 1,000 miles away while tending bar in New Orleans, Vale receives a call saying that her mother, Bonnie, has disappeared. Despite a years-long estrangement from Bonnie, Vale drops everything and returns home to look for her. I actually first saw this one on Mercedes channel, Mercy's Bookish Musings, and I'll link the videos f from whatever I mentioned down below. Um, but this sounded really good and it's something that she was excited about and I'm actually looking forward to her review as well, but um, really piqued my interest. The next one is The Witches of New York by Amy McKay. This is the first in a series and I think there's three books out right now. The year is 1880, 200 years after the trials in Salem, Adelaide Tom, 
Moth from The Virgin Cure, has left her life in the sideshow to open a tea shop with another young woman, a former medical student and guardian de Sor, keeper of spells, Eleanor St. Clair. Together they cater to Manhattan's high society ladies, specializing in cures, palmistry, and potions. All is well until a mysterious young woman named Beatrice Dunn arrives at their door seeking employment. Beatrice soon becomes indispensable as Eleanor's apprentice, but she is also a magnet for unusual occurrences. Now this one gets one of my um, honorable mention for secondary characteristics because it's a it's a thick floppy paperback with deckled edges and and French flaps. So this is and I love the the cover. I love the picture. Um, love this one. The next one is The Garden Party and Other Stories by Katherine Mansfield. And I actually already read the short story, The Garden Party, on Christmas Eve because my family started a new tradition of reading a book and eating chocolate. Like we, we kind of read online, um, kind of a Finnish or Norwegian uh, chocolate, uh, chocolate, Christmas traditional thing. And my daughter was all over that one. Um, really enjoyed this story. Look forward to reading the rest of the book. This one is The Mitford Murders by Jessica Fellows. Jessica Fellows is the niece of Julian Fellows, who wrote Downton Abbey, which I absolutely loved. And this is the first in a mystery series, The Mitford Murders. And it says, it's 1920, an 18-year-old Louisa Cannon dreams of escaping her life of poverty in London. Her salvation is a position within the eccentric, aristocratic, and ultimately notorious Mitford household in the Oxfordshire court countryside. There Louisa becomes nursery maid, chaperone, and confidant to the eldest sister Nancy, who is only 16 will, but will be grow but will grow up to be a successful novelist. An acerbic bright young woman already in love with stories, Nancy is eager to have a friend near her own age in a house full of younger siblings and desperate for intrigue and adventure. That that sounds really fun and um, really enjoying mysteries in the winter and Christmas time. This one doesn't really need a lot of description. Um, it is The Death in Venice and Other Stories by Thomas Mann. And again, look at the cover. <laughs> I love this cover. And it doesn't have deckled edges, but it does have French flaps. So um, I love this one, and I'm really looking forward to reading more short stories. I don't often pick up um, short stories, but there are some that I really enjoyed and, and want to kind of get my feet wet a little bit more. This one is translated from the German by David Luke and Death in Venice and Other Stories by Thomas Mann. This, another, another mention for formatting on this book, and it's, it's, so, it's so pretty. It's The Last Romantics by Tara Conklin. Tara Conklin also wrote The House Girl. And look, it's, it's got metallic foil on the leaves, and it's a floppy paperback with deckled edges and French flaps. So pretty. This one is a sweeping yet intimate family epic. The Last Romantics is an unforgettable exploration of the ties that bind us together, the responsibilities we embrace and the duties we resent and how we can lose and sometimes rescue the ones we love. A novel that pierces the heart and lingers in the mind. It is also a beautiful meditation on the power of stories, how they guide us through difficult times, help us understand the past and point the way toward our future. Now, one of these sentences, it says, a beautiful meditation on the power of stories. And I think, you know, a lot of people who know how much I read and how much I love to read ask, why do you love to read? What's, why do you read? Why do you love to read so much? It's very difficult to answer because I've always read, but I think it's because I love stories. I love narratives. I love how a story places you in the events that are being described, how it places you in the relationships with characters and settings. I, I think that's partly why I love that. It, it makes my brain work in certain ways. And I, I just love, I love getting into those worlds. Every book on my shelf is has a small world contained in it. And I think that's why I love to read so much. The next one is Joyce Carol Oates' first book with Shuddering fall. And Joyce Carol Oates doesn't really need any description from me. Um, she was born in 1938. She's 81 years old. She's written 58 novels. Uh, she taught as a professor in, at Princeton from 1978 to 2014. 
and she was a visiting professor at UC Berkeley. I think she comes out with a new book every year. I don't know how she does it. This is a, um, a copy of her first book. Um, and it says, the first novel from New York Times bestselling author Joyce Carol Oates, a thrilling dark tale of family, revenge, and two souls intertwined by love and violence. It's now back in print um, for fans of America's most prolific storyteller. No, I don't really know much about what it's about. I don't care. It's Joyce Carol Oates. This one is a book I already have. It's one of my favorite authors, um, Charming Billy by Alice McDermott. I already have this book, but I thought this copy was so pretty. And I haven't yet read it, so I picked this up. Um, and fun fact, she um, received her Master of Arts from UNH, which is basically right down the road from me. She also wrote one of my favorite books called Someone and another book that I really enjoyed called The Ninth Hour. And there's no description on this copy, so I'm going to leave this here. I think many of us already know what this one's about. This was, this is Arcadia by Ian Pierce, and I love this, this big hardcover copy with deckled edges. Um... Ian Pierce, uh, born in 1955, 1997, his first novel was An Instance of the Finger Post. Arcadia was, was published in 2015, and the story is written in multiple narratives. Um, I, love, I love big, hefty books like this, so this is really exciting. In 1960s Oxford, Professor Henry Lighton is attempting to write a fantasy novel that foregoes the magic of his predecessors, J.R.R. Tolkien and C.S. Lewis. He finds an unlikely confidant in his quick-witted, inquisitive young neighbor, Rosie. One day, while chasing Lighten's cat, Rosie encounters a doorway in his cellar. She steps through and finds herself in an idyllic pastoral land where storytellers are revered above all others. Yes, please. This one is Sarah Blake's The Guest Book. This is a fairly new release, and I really love that about Book Outlet. A lot of times I can get new releases at um, discounted prices because of the volumes these books are ordered in, deckled edges. This is Sarah Blake um, wrote Grange House in 2001, which I really I read and really enjoyed. She also wrote The Postmistress in 2010, which I also own, haven't read yet. But there are two Sarah Blakes out there. The, the other one published a book called Nayama last year in 2019, which is her first book. This is, that is not this Sarah Blake. And it got a little confusing, but I did, I did a little bit of Wikipedia research. Don't kill me on Wikipedia. But this one is the guest book from Sarah Blake, who's already been published. And it says, no. No, it is a simple word uttered on a summer porch in 1936, and it will haunt Kitty Milton for the rest of her life. Kitty and her husband Ogden are both from families considered to be the backbone of the country, but this refusal will come to be Kitty's defining moment, and its consequences will ripple through the Mid Milton family for generations. For while they summer on their island in Maine, anchored as they are to the way things have always been, the winds of change are beginning to stir. Mm-hmm. <laughs> The last one, also a new release um, from last year, is Namwali Surpels the Old Drift. I grabbed this one because I think I put it in my cart on Book Outlet, and it didn't last very long, but it came back, so I got a copy. This is on the banks of the Zambezi River, a few miles from the majestic Victoria Falls. There was once a colonial settlement, settlement called the Old Drift. Here begins the epic story of a small African nation told by a mysterious swarm that calls itself man's greatest nemesis. The tale, a playful panorama of history, fairy tale, romance, and science fiction. The moral, to err is human. Um, sounds so good. Nimwali Serpel is, is a Zambian writer who teaches at the University of California, Berkeley. And she is an award winner. Um, she won the 2015 Kane Prize for African Writing, and The Old Drift is her first novel. Um, again, I love the big, hefty hardcover. That's it. That's it. I think I counted, and I there may be 17 books that my husband gifted me from Book Outlet, and then there were four from my daughter who <laughs> re-gifted them. I don't care. They're books, so that makes, what, 21 I don't care. I'm not even embarrassed. I have no shame. Book lovers love getting books. I also got some gift cards, which I will spend soon. After this, I actually have ordered some more books from Book Outlet. 
But after this, at the beginning of the year, um, I'm not calling it a resolution because I don't expect to perform this perfectly, but um, on Kelly's channel, books I'm not reading, and I think the dog just knocked something over, and Jason's channel, Old Blues chapters, Chapter and Verse, um, they each have their own channels. They are a married couple who have um, a combined library, and they're running a project next year for only reading books on their shelves. With, they have a couple of exceptions. But I wanted to do that as much as possible. So at the begin starting at the beginning of the year, I'm not gonna not ever buy a new book, but I'm going to um, tightly limit what I do. I'm going to, I use my library already. I, I don't often go to the library for just anything because I have so many of my own books on my shelves. I do like to read new releases from the library because then I, I don't I don't um, risk anything if I don't like something. And what I often do is if I love uh, a new release that I got at the library, I'll, I'll buy it down the road when I find it. But next year, I'm going to try to only spend $40 a month on new books. And that doesn't mean I will always buy new books every month. I'm also not going to limit going to library sales because along with being able to buy books that are 50 cents to a dollar, it's an event for us and I, it's something that we really enjoy. We make a day out of it. It's a family thing. So we have a couple that are coming up in the spring um, from, I think the first big one is in March. And so we're going to go, there's two of them that I know are happening in March. So I will go to those. Um, other than that though, I'm gonna try very hard not to buy new books. I have so many that um, I want to read that I already own. And again, I don't really care how many unread books I have on my shelves. I know they're there. I love them. I love the presence of books on my shelves. I know every book on my shelf, even though I don't have a lot of organization. So I know what's there and I know what I want to read. Um, I will link their channels down below as well. So you can kind of see for yourself if you would enjoy doing that. Um, I know Lukash from Totally Pretentious has also jumped on board, and I'm sure there are other booktubers or other readers or commenters that are going to try to do this as well. So thanks for coming along. Um, I hope you had a Merry Christmas or a Happy Holidays, whatever it is that you celebrate. And I sure did. I really enjoyed myself. It's now the day after Christmas, my favorite day of the holiday, to have an excuse to just sit back and read and drink something hot and take naps and curl up with a very thick blanket and a very warm and furry cat. See you soon, I hope. Comment down below, subscribe if you'd like, and I will uh, be back with you later in another week or so. Take care. Bye.